uh, the death of Judo Jean LaBelle. I, because you, I don't think you ever went to the West Coast, did you? You're never in LA, you're never in San Francisco, you're never in Portland. Did you but, ever have a run-in with Judo? No, I never met him. But I heard about him. He was a tough guy. Nobody messed with him. Never heard one bad thing about him. So when you go through a career in wrestling and nobody says anything kind of derogatory about you, you're a pretty good guy. And I think him being good guys, because he could back up what he said. I don't think he was a smart ass. He wasn't a bully. He was a decent man and was a great, great wrestler. And judo is, he excelled in judo is, and I've heard a lot of, not even, I haven't even heard a lot of wild stories about him. So basically, I think he was just a straight up good guy and people liked him. Well, with, uh, with wild stories, there's a very famous one where he actually, I think he got put up for murder. Uh, there was him and somebody else didn't like a third person who was messing around with their business. And he was the getaway driver. This is Judo Jean LaBelle. He was the getaway driver for the other guy who ended up killing this mutual enemy back in the 70s. And he ended up, even as the getaway driver, he got away from it scot-free. Uh, as far as his wrestling goes, I believe, uh, he was never that into professional wrestling and because he owned a stake, like a 10% stake into the LA, uh, LA uh, Hollywood Territory. He ended mm. up being installed more or less as the uh, backstage interviewer guy. And then when he got back in the ring in the dying days of the Territory... Uh, he was terrible. <laughs> he was like 50-odd as well. Well, he had a move, and guys still talk about it. It's called the uh, – what was that move it's called? The Sugar the, Hold. Uh, I've, had it, I've had it explained to me and shown to me because those old shooters in, in England, John Foley, and even Tony Charles, some of those guys – they knew how to they knew how to shoot because they had to because they weren't very overly big guys so they had to know how to defend themselves in case they got in the ring with an american big guy who wanted to rough them up they could just take him down and literally make him cry but this sugar hole they talk about is is a legit hold and john foley told me and he's from wigan in england famous for the for the shooters that came out of there and I think I sent you a uh, a clip on the sugar hole being applied. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, you're just stretching the guy out like this, and you're turning him in such a way. John Foley told me he pulled one guy's shoulder out of its socket. So when you do that in just a hold, and literally you could almost kill a guy in that hole and nothing he could do about it because he's immobilized. You just got him tied up in such a way. But – that the sugar hold, when when somebody used to say he put him into sugar or he sugared him, that means he he rendered him useless to any other any other activity for the next day or so, because the sugar hold was a real hold, and you'd have to see it put on to really understand it. I I could never put it on because I was never an amateur wrestler, but I do know that it has been put on me but very lightly. And this is how the old timers used to do me. They say, Hey, 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 hey yeah, that's where they talk. Hey, you know, yeah, yeah. You don't know what they were saying, but they would like laugh in between a lot of English guys. Hey, and, let's show this. <laughs> and then you say, I got it. I got it. And they said, Hey, I just trying to show you. Right here. <laughs> and then I've left the ring a lot of times with an English wrestler, uh, glad to get out. And that's why I always made friends with the British guys because they all knew how to damn just rip you apart, but they, they good guys. And I, but I always got along with them because I didn't want to be putting that sugar hold again. <laughs>